everyone, this is Lo the Don. I'm sitting with Indianapolis' very own and Lagos, Nigeria native, T Clef. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good. So, um, I read that you were in Indianapolis. You've been in America for at least 10 years, and you are a black man in America. However, you are Nigerian born and raised okay so you were raised on different principles and perspectives and then you came to america and you got this whole different perspective and everything uh talk about that and talk about the music difference and the the culture change for you and you know how's that how has that been for you well i think am i holding the mic you got it yeah um for the most part i think it's just um adjusting to um the racial unquote inequality here because you know in Nigeria we're, we're all black and you know we all treat you know each other the same and uh, coming here and knowing that you know there's a culture um, oh the blacks act this way the whites act this way and this um, that's that's been the, the biggest part that I've had to adjust to everything else I mean it's the same we have street lights we have malls you know it's just it's just been the same uh, so this has been about that. I'm glad you mentioned that because everybody just think that Nigeria or Africa, the continent of Africa and the different countries within it, that is just dirt and, and animals. And, th and that irritates me because if you're educated, you would know that there's very progress areas, you know. So what are, what are your favorite areas to go to and what areas would you suggest to go to if people want to visit? Yeah, the crazy thing is um, I actually didn't see a lion until I got here. So, like, I live in the city of Lagos and, you know, I mean, I did not see a real life lion until I got to the States. And whenever I tell people, you know, things like that, they're like, well, aren't you out there running with gorillas and all? I'm like, yeah, you know, um, every now and then my gorilla will run into a gorilla. It will have an accident, you know, call the insurance company, you know, you gotta, gotta patch this gorilla up. But um, it's, I mean, it's, it's just about that. Um, you know, the same infrastructure that we have over there, you guys kind of have it here, but um, a lot more. You know, that's that's pretty much the, the, the biggest difference. So, yeah. So. Okay, so I also read that you um, you grew up with this gospel church background. Um, you know, we have artists that normally have this church background. I mean, all of us, you know, we start off with, you know, the playing in the church and, you know, then we transfer over to secular music. So how has that journey been? I know that can be not only... Um, Family-wise, some people are like, oh, you're, you're going to secular. Yeah. But then it can be a spiritual, it can be a mental, it can just be a battle in general. So how did you come to peace with that? Now, uh, I'll, I'll give you the backstory. You know, I always went to church with my mom on Sundays. And um, for some reason, she figured out that, you know, um, I could sing. I didn't even know that I could sing um, that well. Um, I knew people wanted to hear me sing, but I, I didn't know it personally. So... Uh, I'd asked her for a pair of jeans, I think. I was like a junior in high school or something, and, you know, it was what everybody was getting, and I needed those. And she was like, well, you know, if you could join the choir for a couple of months, and I'll get you those jeans. I'm like, all right, cool, you know. And and that was how everything everything started. So I started singing, you know, started becoming fun, and um, we didn't have anybody to play the keys because the guy to play the keys was going to college, so that's how I picked up on the keys. And then the guy that was playing the drums, you know, was leaving for college too, so that's how I picked up on the drums. So every single thing that, you know, uh, I learned was out of necessity. Um, but to ter transition from the gospel to the secular, I, at, at some level, I, I started, I wanted to talk about more. You know, I, I didn't want to always tie everything down to the, you know, glory of God. Yes, you know, um, he is all seen and all, you know, but... I wanted to feel like if I'm walking on the street and I saw a beautiful woman and I want to say hi to her, you know, I want to be able to talk about that. I want to be able to talk about how I feel prior to saying hi to her. And that doesn't necessarily tie into, you know, the whole gospel, um, uh, gospel music per se. Um, but yeah, that, that was how I started, you know, making my transition. And um, so this was me singing and leading praise and worship in the choir. And then at night, I'm singing about these women. And I was like, ah, I don't think I can mix these two. So I just stopped singing in the choir and just transitioned. So, yeah. Okay, so I noticed that you and Miss Talia Speaks, I know that you guys have created this culture, this Hypnavi culture. Um, talk a little bit about that. What is Hypnavi? What does it mean? And what does it mean for Indianapolis? Um, Hypnavi is, uh, stems from the hip portion of it stems from hip hop. So, which is a cool version of it. And then the Navi comes from, you know, navigation. So, um, you know, you are navigating your cool. So, you know how, you know, back to the gospel, you know how, uh, the people refer to, um, Christ's disciples as Christians after Christ died, you know, because they acted like, 
you know, Christ, this is what I believe and this is what I'm willing to die for. So basically it's about embracing yourself, embracing your individuality and saying, you know, this is what I think is cool. You know, you dressing how you dress, if, if it's cool, then that's hypnoti. You know, you speak in the way you speak and not having to conform to society's rules and all that good stuff. So it's about, <laughs> it's about uh, uh, embracing yourself. And um, the logo in there is a hashtag. So hashtag cool, hashtag hairstyle, hashtag, you know, bracelets. Um, and then there are nine squares in that so we can only be a nine over ten version of ourselves because we're not perfect so we're just trying to be the best versions of ourselves. so embracing the imperfection makes us perfect so pretty much that's kind of um, how everything came out so. so perfectly imperfect waking up every day to become the best versions of ourselves. we would never ever truly make it yes. but always striving for it yes. i like that I like this cut in my eyes. I mean, this is me, you know, uh, and, and I love me, and that's hypnotic, you know, so. Yeah. So what can we see more from T. Clef, and what can we see more from Hypnavi in the future? I know that you guys had a um, had a couple of events over the summer, and as winter emerged, you know, Indiana, we can, Indiana weather can be funny. Yeah. So yeah. what are some things coming for the future? I know you guys have the T-shirts. You guys are really creating culture of people just loving themselves yeah. and loving people around them. So what can we see in the future? Well, we're still going to put on a few more events, um, you know, new music, quality music, um, and that's just pretty much what it is, you know, uh, just – the more events, the music, and you know, just try to um, spread the brand as much as we can. So, now your new album, Fall, that was amazing. The quality was amazing. I mean, I loved it. My boyfriend loved it. My niece loved it. Like, it was dope. I mean, it was amazing. I'm so happy that Talia sent that to me. So, talk about that. What made you go with that? Um, and just elaborate on Fall, and you know where they can find that song at. Now, first of all, shout out to Talia. She helps uh, manage the brand. So, yeah, she uh, she's working out here. But um, uh, Fall, I made Fall last year. Um, and prior to Fall, I put out another single called Splits. And um, I actually let the people decide, you know, so most of them, they, they pick Splits. And this time, I actually got to pick um, Fall. And, um, you know, uh, it was a song that, you know, went back on, um, like, time and time and time again. Um, so it's mostly... Um, I think the 90s R&B are like, you know, where it's at. So uh, basically what I'm really trying to do is kind of fuse, like be that midpoint between what was really happening in the 90s and put today's sound to it. Uh, so that was, that was how Fall came. It contains a sample from, uh, is it Rain by SWV? Yeah. yeah, so that, that, that was what we built the song off of. And you know, there you have it, man. Awesome. Yeah. So where can we, um, if somebody want to connect with you or connect with the Hypnavi crew, can you just give us a little information, social media, website, or anything about where can we find you? Where can, if I'm just sitting back, I'm like, you know what, that Hypnavi wave is dope. How can I be a part of that? Where can we connect with you? You know, give us some information to contact you. Uh, so www.hypnavi.com, H-I-P-N-A-V-I, um, Twitter, Hypnavi, Instagram. We're really huge on Instagram, so um, H I P N E V I and uh, Facebook, the same thing too. So okay. everything have not be. Okay, yeah. So yeah. Awesome. Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, this has been Lola Don speaking with T Clef. Thank you to Talia Media Speaks. Make sure you go follow her. Thank you, Iceman Graphics, for recording this. And we are out. Peace. The one, the one that I need.